All right, guys, American Trucker here. No, I haven't made a video in a while, but I am back on the road for the next month or so. And I got to take a little more time off again, but I've taken a lot of time off. But I worked my butt off the first year leasing for Prime. And then I used that money to buy a used truck through Pedigree at Prime, one of their used trucks. And um, I'm looking forward to taking more time off. I was trying to do that. I wasn't planning on doing that, but as a medical taking care of someone that had surgery and now she is um, recovering. I had to take a lot of time off, you know, she had a back surgery, so, you know, that takes a lot of time, so that's, you know, worth more than money, you know, or anything like that, so now I'm back on track for, you know, for the next month at least, I'm going to take a little time off and then back on track again and try to knock out the rest of the year efficiently, effectively. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about mindset. I know that's some people's favorite topic, and then some people that are drivers steer away from that. They don't like talking about that at all. Um, and I understand for for reasons. Everybody's got different reasons why they do or don't want to talk about it. Um, all I know is whenever I first started, I started looking into trucking. You know, me just like a lot of other people. What's some of the things you really want to know? How much money can you make? And, and what I found out was depends on which video on YouTube you watch or who you talk to and you just don't know who's telling the truth and who's not so but I'm just gonna put one out as well anyways about the, you know the kind of money you can make out here and either you can believe me or not um, the thing is anything I ever say I usually put a date with it on a certain every paycheck that I mention how much at any point in time if you see me in person at the prime terminal or anywhere or you want to talk on the phone um, I could I could in screenshots if, I, if you really want me to but anything I ever say like if I ever say it there was a date on 2, two 9 February 9th where I made $4,025 that week um, I can back it up with the paycheck show for it Prime gives you a paycheck every week a breakdown is like six pages of all your expenses all the money you made tolls I mean just any and everything you could think of it's like six pages worth of data so miles everything can't really there's really nothing there you can't figure out or, or it's not gonna be right there in black and white um, so if I tell you I'm telling you it's the truth but who do you, you know how do you know that if you don't see my pay stubs or whatever but I can show them but I'm not gonna just put them out there for everyone for anyone there's people that just want to try to catch you you know if I feel like someone's really wanting to learn and want to know for sure what kind of money you make they got maybe got a family and kids stuff like that and they want somebody BS them I'll definitely talk to that person, show them, and, and talk to them about how you make money out here, how you be efficient, um, you know, things like that. My opinions, basically, on, on trucking so far, on you know, how to make it best as possible under circumstances. If you think about OTR, or at least for Prime, or any any company, I can't speak on what other companies make, but I can speak on OTR trucking. At least my experience so far. Um, so we're gonna talk a little about money, uh, real quick. I want to talk about equipment. If you are just getting into trucking and you're not sure if it's something you're going to want to do, a lot of people get in trucking and they're not even here a month, two months, maybe, if they make it through training um, because of being gone and they're not used to that. They've been home most of their life, seeing family and friends, and it's just not something for them um, to be gone in multiple weeks at a time. And in my opinion, if you're going to make this worth it, OTR, I would say be gone multiple weeks at a time unless you're just at a place in your life where you don't need to be. You can be gone four weeks and take off two weeks and you can afford that based off your bills and your current situation and your goals. Then OTR, and if that schedule works for you, then I think you come to prime with OTR, no problem. But right now I'm trying to work as much as possible even though I took a lot of time off so far this year, but for a certain reason. And then, I, you know, five years from now, then I might just work month on, month off two weeks on, one week off, three weeks on, one week off, something like that, scale back for sure. But I'm gonna, I gotta set myself up for a better position. I got a few goals right now. I'm in a good position financially, I have no debt. This truck's paid off, I paid for it, and I bought it um, after one year of working at Prime, a used truck. Um, and with an APU and, and all the bells and whistles, it's a 2019 Freightliner, and that's special, but it's, I bought it for fuel economy, Pretty cheap to work on if they break down, they're pretty reliable. They're just not fancy, right? They're, they're not, they don't ride as nice as the, the P2 
Peterbilt for sure, and I don't know much about Kenworth, but I know they're not as fancy as the Peterbilt or Kenworth, or definitely the Volvos. The Volvos are like the Cadillacs, but I don't know what kind of fuel mileage they get. I um, heard they're kind of expensive to work on, and then find a place to work on them is difficult versus... Freightliner is pretty basic, but with the basic stuff comes basic maintenance as well, right? You don't have a lot of... I just think it's a good truck. I think it's a good starter truck for your first truck to buy, at least to fit me well. When I was per gallon was good, and like I said, all the other stuff I just mentioned, I didn't want to, I feel like I just needed to kind of start with the Freightliner. Maybe one day and I've got more money and I want to bump it up to a nice Peterbilt and I can afford to work on it and find, you know, places that I will work on it and, you know, have a little bit better, smoother ride and all that stuff. But right now, comfort's not my thing. It's about getting started and making that's what I'm out here doing. Um, somebody asked me about leasing, lease purchasing. My plan was to lease purchase as soon as possible. I started leasing, I did training, and then I started leasing prime, straight out training. You don't have to go company driver, but you can. There's an argument for both of those sides, depending on the situation. Some people, my situation was I'm retired military and I have, a, I have the residual income for that. And I have, I did 24 years, so I have dental, medical, and all that stuff. I didn't need any of that stuff that comes with the W-2 job. Now, a lot of families, and it's, this is their only source of income, have to have health insurance, uh, you got a wife, a couple of kids, or something like that. Health insurance, dental insurance, you know, you want to have life insurance, I would think so. Um, things like that, you know, those are a lot more accessible through the driver through a company driver program at Prime. Cheaper maybe, I'm not, I'm not sure. And I know you can get your own if you lease and you're a 1099, which is different than a W-2. If you're not sure, you need to look up the difference. You pay your own taxes, you keep track of your own taxes, things like that. Um, it's a little more risky for some people because they've never been in that situation before. Um, they get themselves into a bond. And you only get so many days per, how many days you work as a company driver vacation time. But as a um, lease driver, you can kind of take week two, three at a time if you want. But again, you got to understand what leasing involves when you, when you start making that payment. Once you sign that contract, you're locked into a lease payment whether you work or not. If you take up two weeks off, you still got to make that truck payment for those two weeks and a PU payment and other expenses that come out automatically. So you got to take that consideration. But so what I was getting at was a guy asked me, can you just go straight into lease purchase? I don't know if it's changed. The best thing to do is call success leasing. But my first year, I went into lease. And the first thing I asked success leasing was, could I go ahead and lease purchase? I had the money for a down payment, which you need to have the money for a down payment. Check with them. They can tell you how much. But at that point in time, as you had to lease for 90 days before you could order a truck and do a lease purchase, stuff lined up. I don't know if that's changed because about 60 days into it, I was getting pumped up, had money saved up, ready to go, wanted to do the lease purchase, and they canceled it. If you guys know, if you've been in Prime for a while, this was back in 2022, 2022, um, they canceled it on me early in, that, early in the year, and I just was leasing the rest of the time after that. And then just by the time my lease was up, stepped away for a few months from Prime, they started lease purchase back, so I think in October 2022, or somewhere around in there. But anyways, that's okay, because it kind of worked out. Um, I stepped away, trying to figure out what I, what I was going to do next, and saved up a ton of money that year, um, and bought a used truck from Pedigree, and then now I'm leased back on to Prime. Right? It's, it's basically sort of like leasing, I'm underneath their insurance, all that stuff. Tags, I pay for insurance, I pay for stuff like that, ELD, you know, just like everybody else. But um, my, my fixed cost, my expenses that Prime takes out for me is about $300 a week now. Now, because I don't have a lease payment, right? I don't have a truck payment. I bought the truck straight out, or APU payment. So if you come to Prime, you can expect $1,200, $1,300 lease. APU payment if 
injury can release the truck. Uh, so whenever I go over these numbers, though, I'll explain. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what I made, and then you know, through some simple math, I'll tell you what you would make if you were releasing, doing this pretty much the exact same weeks I was doing, or, or on, you know, pretty close. But anyways, so it used to be you had a lease for 90 days before you could enter a lease purchase contract. And, and there's plenty of videos on lease purchase um, video lease purchase videos about Prime's lease purchase program there's some good ones out there you just gotta kind of decipher through I guess somebody who knows what they're talking about when they talk about the, how the program works you're gonna look up a lot of videos about lease purchase and 50% of my lease is gonna say lease purchase is a scam Not a scam at Prime, I can tell you that. But they, there's some drawbacks, but they're, in my opinion, the benefits way really outweigh the drawbacks. Um, and a lot of the drawbacks are just is this something you're going to do for sure throughout that lease purchase? Right? Um, you're committing to something, just like you would commit to a car payment, things like that. You can't just walk away. As in, like the lease, you can. The lease, you can say, hey, I'm not feeling this no more. I've been doing this for six months. It's not my thing. It's not working out for me and my family. I'm bringing the truck back. And that will walk you through the steps of what you need to do. There ain't no big, crazy penalty. You're not going to be making a lease payment after you bring the truck back, you know, for another year or nothing like that. Is there some lease, lease scams out there? Sure. Is there some lease purchase scams out there? Sure. Oh, absolutely. Anything to do with money? promise you there's always going to be corruption and, and somewhere somebody's going to be getting over on somebody you just got to you know look at the source that you're listening to and or the company that you're thinking about going on to if it sounds too good to be true then it probably is right? if it sounds extraordinarily great you got to make them want to get a second third fourth opinion but anyways yes so and the other thing is you gotta eat healthy out here. And you you've gotta find time to work out. Right? You're gonna be stressed out here, away from your family. Some people's gonna be lonely, homesick, all that stuff. You gotta find some way to relieve that stress. In my opinion, there's no really no better way than to work out. Right? If you watched any of my videos before, you'll know I'm a big proponent of physical fitness. You gotta eat healthy. Do not eat at these truck stops. One, they're super expensive. And two, 90% of it is crap. When I say super expensive though, I say like double what you can get at Walmart. Double the price, basically. Go to Walmart, go to a grocery store, stock up, get your refrigerator, get your microwave. Um, eat a lot of fruits out here, in my opinion, protein drinks, things like that, protein shakes. And, uh, you know, go to the gym. I'm a big proponent of Planet Fitness. There's, there's over 2,000 Planet Fitnesses across the nation. All you gotta do is join one. If you join one for $10.99 a month, whatever it is now, you can you can go to any 2000 any of them. So why you wouldn't do that, I have no clue, right, instead of sitting in a truck stop. You can park there 90% of the time, right? Once you start learning where you can and can't park, it makes a big difference, but you can park there, or sometimes right across the street, there'll be a parking lot that you can park in overnight, uh, quiet, you got a, you know, a bunch of other truckers around, trash everywhere, smell like pee bottles, you know, all over the place, stuff like that. Um, I just rather I'd rather park there, take a shower there, work out, and park. Ten ninety nine a month. I mean, what you? Here's the basics on, on parking at Planet Fitness. If it's in a big city, you probably can't park there, or they won't let you park there. If it's on the outskirts, you got a pretty good chance of being able to do both of those. Um, and if it's in between cities, there's no major city around, there's a very high probability that there'll be parking space available and they have no problem with parking there overnight. So that's Planet Fitness. If you join, um, then you can go to any of them. And I just, I mean, you gotta take a DOT physical. A lot of truckers out here are overweight, or they become overweight. I'm telling you, you talk to a trucker that wasn't a bit overweight, two years later, ask him how much weight he's gained. Majority of them are going tell you they've gained 10, 15, 20, 30 pounds, right? Drive them down the road for hours at a time to snack them. Fat cakes, pretzels, whatever. Just, you know, so 
So you got to start off being your best advocate when it comes to health and fitness. Start a routine from the beginning, and then once you get a routine going, right, it's just, it's just seems natural at that point. Nine out of ten days, I'm out here driving, and I start to get toward the end of the day, or when I'm planning out my trip, I mean, the first thing I do is look for a planet fitness. That's how I plan most of my trips is, you know, where I'm going to stop at is, you know, where the next, where that planet fitness is. I'm stopping for the night and I calculate my hours and all that stuff. So, and it's just, now it's habit. I can't even tell you, one out of, one day out of a week, maybe I might, I might park at a truck stop. One day, maybe, out of seven, maybe. And then most of the time it's planet fitness is where I'm working out or not. like a rest area somewhere a little bit you know quieter than just a stinking truck stop but anyways um all right the money that's what everybody wants to know about 16 minutes into it and that's way too long i'm sure but uh, the money so what i did was if you're a company driver and you come to prime i don't know what they start off at if you're a company driver which a lot of people have like i said family wife and two three kids and they want the benefits that come along with a company driver they don't make as much money on average but they got access to pretty good benefits now i think lease drivers do now they may pay more but it's kind of more of a it's more of an indirect access to that not so much a direct access like your company driver but you just have to look into that and decide if it's for you um, if you're not good at managing money, my opinion would be company driver, don't lie to yourself. Um, because you've got to put back your own taxes and deal with that at the, end of the, at the end of the year. But really you do it every four months at the end of each quarter. So you got to be realistic when you come out here. If you ain't sure, I guess the rule, let me make sure nobody's over here. I guess if you're not sure, a, a, a decent rule of thumb in my in my opinion would be go company driver, see if you can handle being away, and um, see what the benefits are and everything. And then while you're doing a company driver, research and see what it takes to be a lease driver, right? And then see if that's something you want to do. While you're doing that research, kind of compare company driver benefits to what you would need to pay yourself if you were making if you were um, if you go lease right you just got to find you a good mentor somebody who's a little bit savvy in life that's been around the block a time or two and have them sit down with you and mentor you on pros and cons of you know i want to say company driver versus lease driver what it is really is managing money and managing time in my opinion so you find someone that'll help you out and they could kind of steer you in the right direction but you gotta find someone who really like i said who knows how to mentor i spent over 20 years mentoring soldiers and we didn't just mentor how much money they make could they make it to the next paycheck every facet of their life their finances you know their marriage you know their relationship with their kids you know time off you know their healthy you know more unhealthy habits um yeah it was definitely you know financial course but there was just the whole concept Really figuring out who that person is, and you can, when you figure out some who someone is, and you know them really well, you're you're able to help them a lot better than if you just sit down and someone you never met before and try to tell them about the math and how much money they make. Well, that don't mean that means two different things to two different people. You can take someone who does a company driver and make six thousand dollars a month as a W two and be perfectly fine, and then you can take someone who just says that's not enough money for them. Same thing with lease. You know, they can make X amount of money leasing. And somebody can say, I can't afford this. But then somebody, somebody's going to say, man, this is more money I've ever made in my life. Um, get on your background, where you came from. And then it depends on what you do with that money. At the end of the month, right, if you're leasing out here and you, you're used to making forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, sixty thousand dollars a year, and you come out here and you work hard and you lease, you have no problem, in my opinion. Including any external factors, you know, economy crashes, you get fired, you know, something like that. But the money you can make, um, it's kind of what you do with it. 
makes all the difference in the world, not, not so much just how much you make. But anyways, that's where a good mentor would come along and you know, be handy. Alright, um, so I don't drive my, I don't drive my tail end off like some people would think, but um, basically if you make 54 cents a mile and you run 10,000 miles a month, alright, four weeks, which I know there's four point, I think 4.33 weeks a month, so a little over four weeks a month, four weeks, four times seven is really 28 days, so there's a little extra on the back end, but just rounding purposes. You drive 10,000 10, miles a month, 2,500 miles a week, right? 10,000 times 54 cents or whatever whatever prime starts you off at if you're a company driver. It's $5,400. Whereas, I believe, in my opinion, if you lease, with the lease payment, at all expenses, every bit of it, I don't see why you can't make ten thousand, eight to ten thousand dollars a month net. So that's all expenses, including the lease payment, APU payment, all your tolls, all your fuel, everything. Eight to ten thousand. I don't believe it's unreasonable. Hang on, man. I think somebody's going over here. No. Eight to ten thousand is not unreasonable, in my opinion. Maybe a tad bit less, but not much. Just starting off to become efficient. But you just got to work harder, and you still, I still believe you can make eight to ten thousand dollars a month net in this economy. This is April 2023. Eight to ten thousand dollars a month net. That's everything but taxes. Right? You have to figure out taxes. Again, what I do is not what everybody else does, but I take thirty percent out every single paycheck the very first thing I do I put it to a tax account and I do not touch it until I get with the tax man and he goes give me you know, like, if I put this much in there and he says give me this much and I got this much left over great throw it to a savings account vacation account pay off something whatever the case may be keep it in there for taxes later on in case you made a mistake next quarter whatever that's your strategy I guess but come out here and work you're not you're not afraid to be out here on the road um, you can make good money at prime that's just my opinion but I got the numbers backed up I can tell you that I got a whole first year though a little less than a year at least with prime I got every single paycheck every single one and then since I've been back by my own truck I got all the paychecks as well but um if you um so I'm gonna give you some examples I've went over these once already in another video, but I'm going to recap and I'm going to tell you why I'm going over them again. But I'm going to give you four paychecks. My first four paychecks back with Prime, I saved my first four. Technically, my first one, it was like $254, but I just got back with Prime. Um, and I think that was a even reimbursement for even um, that would travel or something like that. What do you mean? Full paycheck. But my first paycheck on February 2nd was $2,804, 2804 This is net. This is after all expenses except taxes all expenses except taxes for me i don't have like i said i don't have health insurance all that stuff. i don't have an emergency fund your people talk about that but february 2nd i made 2804 february 9th i made 4025 dollars february 16th i made 3379 dollars and february 23rd i made 5408 dollars which is a total over those four weeks of fifteen thousand six hundred sixteen dollars now, I don't have, you're going to have roughly the same expenses, plus you're going to have a truck payment and an APU payment. And I figured up $1,250 a week, which is about $5,000 over four weeks, you're going to have that much more coming out than me. So, that makes a big difference, a huge difference. So, over those four weeks, if you did the exact same thing I did, and I'm, I'm going to tell you how many miles I did here in a minute each week. But I did just a little over 10,000 miles. That was not hard to do at all. In this economy, you can't complain about that. But anyways, so I make 15,616, and you're going to subtract $5,000 because if you come out here and you lease for Prime, like I said, you would have that lease payment, APU payment, which is about $1,250 a week. So if you did the same week I did, and you had a lease payment and APU payment and all 
the other expenses that I have. If you mirrored me, you shattered exactly what I did that week, which fluctuates. But on average, if you just did what I did, that would be $10,616 after all expenses that you would have made over those four weeks with a lease payment and you know, all the other expenses, fuel and everything. So the only thing out of that $10,616 that you would have to take out is taxes. And then what's left is what you got to pay rent with, car payment, insurance, health insurance, dinner, whatever. However you make it, however you make it. So $10,000, $10,616, take 30% out of that, do the math, what you have left over is what you put in your pocket to pay your bills for those four weeks. Again, you can make more, you can make less, you come out here and sit, you get bad loads that week, you get better loads that week, or it just, you know, I don't feel like I run hard, I really don't. My first year, I did. I was inefficient, didn't really know what I was doing, so I made up for it by running my butt off. Ten hours, I'm back on the road. I'm running on recaps daily after the first week, you know, that's what I was doing until I took time off and recuperated. Never took a, never took a... 36 hour or whatever, 34 hour reset. I didn't do none of that stuff. If I was out here, I was working. And I didn't slow down for nothing. I slowed down when I went home. That's why I worked hard out here so I could, you know, make up for my inefficiencies because I was new and it, I did very well doing that. And then now, I probably pull it back a little bit because I've become a lot more efficient managing my clock, things like that. Um, so I probably don't work as hard. And I've taken a lot more time off. I'm ready to go. But anyways, um, I did 10,461 miles. I don't know if I covered that over those four weeks. So that's not bad. I gotta go, man. They're, they um, just got me done and loaded. Plus, this is the longest video I probably ever did. So, alright, guys. Leave your comments below. Um, if you want to use my driver code, it's DYKJE. Or send me a message and I'll get back with you. Alright, guys. American Trucker. I'm out.